Okay, um, we're going to move into a, a part of uh, vectors, which is to do with 3D. Uh, the introduction today, what we're going to do is um, recap how to find the magnitude of a vector, which is Pythagoras, and this is Pythagoras in 3D, and also what the dot product uh, we've used to. So, for the start of today, um, I'd like you to tell me what a dot product of between two vectors that gives you, so the question is, um, what do may dot b uh, equal zero? What's the scale that you mean when the scalar product of two vectors is zero? This is a follow-up from yesterday. So the assumption is neither of these vectors are zero, so that means the cosine of theta is zero. And when's the cosine of theta? Zero. So if A does not equal zero and B is not zero, then what we have is um, the fact that cos theta equals zero, and then we know theta therefore will be 90, plus or minus 90, plus or minus. And then I keep adding on 360, so it's plus or minus 270. Okay, so that's how the, what it means. So we've actually got a way of checking if they're perpendicular. If they came out as being the same as the product of the two sides, then you know that you've actually got uh, the cosine must be 1, and therefore they are parallel, anti parallel. And that comes out from these two. So if we actually have a dot b equals a and b, that tells me that cos of theta equals 1. And if we say plus or minus, so it's magnitude. And that means that the theta is either zero degrees or 180 degrees or similar and that means they are parallel. Okay so let's uh, move into three dimensions then. Now three dimensions it's not at all horrible if you've coped with all of this in two dimensions. Three dimensional vector has three components. You've got an x component, a y component and a z component and they fit together to make a diagonal. Okay. If I was to look down on it from the top, we get a nice right angle triangle. So the shadow of this on the plane, you can do Pythagoras to find that length. And then if you actually look at right angles to it, that length would then give me another right angle, allowing us to do this diagonal here, so I can use Pythagoras, x squared plus y squared gives me this long line squared. And then if we slip it down, that line is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Square rooted will give me the length and magnitude of that three-dimensional vector. So if I've got a vector, which I'll have some vector here, the three-dimensional vector I've got in black, well, that vector has three components and that x which was three, a y which was two, and a j, uh, a third vector, one unit, or a k vector. And that's how we get the third vector, the third dimension. Or column vector, just three numbers, one above the other. Three, two, and one. If I want to find the magnitude of R then, Like I said, we could find this part, and so to do it as r is the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared. That gives me this length here, if I square rooted it. And then by that tilting action, by this tilting action, you now see we've got 
x squared plus y squared square root to give you the base plus z squared gives me the whole vector diagonally. So we add in the z component as well, and it just adds on to the end of my vector. And it continues. So my three vector will be the square root of 9 and 14. Uh, some of you uh, need to be aware of thirds. You cannot have, should not have decimals inside here if you want to leave that as an accurate answer. It should not be a decimal. <coughs> so that's how we can find actually the position of a vector and its magnitude. The other thing we did with them, and I would like to do today, that's magnitude. That's chapter 7.8 in the P4 book, and so 7H can be done, and we'll do a little bit on the direction between two vectors, and this bit will be going yes over there, and it's down to the same idea as we had yesterday, which is if I have two vectors, A and B, I can actually work out another side on the other side, a vector C, which can be B minus A or A minus B, depends which way around you want to do. I'm going to finish at B, so I'll do that one. To find the angle between them, I can use the cosine law. So the modulus of C equals A squared plus B squared minus 2 modulus of A magnitude B times cos of the angle between them. And that's quite possible to do. And I'm comfortably in a question. <coughs> and we found the result of that led to the dot product as being the vector A dot B is A times b times the cos of the angle between them, just like we discussed right at the top. It's not changed at all at this point. What does change with it is if I was to do my two, a vector with two directions. And the question is, which angle is this? Is it an angle from the base? Is it an angle in the x, y? What direction is it? So I've got to some of my animation. I've got two vectors here. Um, and if we scroll home, you can see the vector 1 is the 3, 2, 1 vector, and vector B is a, look down in it, a 1, 3, 2 vector. So we've got 3, 2, 1 is the first vector, and 1, 2, 3 is the third, second vector. And the angle between them is the angle in the plane. So you, what you have to do is try and get into that plane of that angle, which is the plane going this way. So this is actually, between those two lines, it's the smallest angle between them. And this part, the blue line is the, the vector that we're, or the plane that we're in. So if I move it now, Hmm. Well, what happened to my plane? Just got rid of it. Three versus one, two, three. Give me three points. One, two, three. That's the plane that they're talking about. And if I move it around, you can see that those vectors and the angle being measured are all in the same plane. And that's the angle they're talking about. Okay, so let's just take that into the other diagram. So my two vectors were vector A, and three, the 3, 2, 1 again, and 
back to B. What's only one, three, two. Back to B. To find the angle between them, we need to do the dot product. So A dot B is AX BX plus AY BY. And then we need our third part, which is the Z direction. We add on AZ BZ. So my sum, I actually get the sum. 3 times 1, then 2 times 3, and finally 1 times 2. So my dot product is going to be 3, 9, and 11. I need the magnitude of each vector. So the magnitude of A is the square root of <coughs> 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 1. So I'm going to get into that one as 14 earlier. And the modulus of B is also square root of 14. So it's a 1 squared nine plus 9 plus 4. Again, that's a 14 as well. So we can now do a dot b equals magnitude of a, magnitude of b, cos of the angle. And if I rearrange this, cos of my angle is a dot b divided by modulus of 14, square root of 14, square root of 14. So 11 over 14. So theta is the inverse cos of 11 over 14. is 38.21 degrees and that's what we actually had in the video. Okay, so if I go back to my video, go back to the calculator, 38.21 is the measured angle between those two vectors. Okay, so probably that's the basics of the 3D. Uh, the section you need for direction which means you can now do section so <coughs> that's how it's having covered section 711 for exercise 7k again p4 book okay there we go